Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of What's For Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor and I share these What's For Dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you some new meal ideas and to motivate you to cook more for your family. So if you like these kinds of videos, I do hope that you will subscribe down below so you can come back and see my future ones. And I've also been doing this for quite a few years now, so I have a whole playlist full of these types of videos. Today I have seven meals from this past week to share with you. Some of them were new and I know that we will be making again because they definitely were a favorite. Friday nights I like to keep super simple. If you've been here a while you know that. So we started off with a easy family favorite which is grilled cheese and tomato soup. Our favorite bread for grilled cheese is some sourdough. So I had some Havarti and some cheddar on some sourdough bread. And then the kids actually had grilled ham and cheese with some American and cheddar and ham. And then our favorite tomato soup from a can is Progresso Hearty Tomato Soup. It is the best that we have ever tried. Saturday night was another pretty easy meal. We made some nachos. So I have this giant can of Rico's nacho cheese that I always talk about getting at Sam's Club. So I took some of that and put it in a pot to warm up on the stove. And then I thought I would show you guys how I freeze it because I always talk about how this freezes well and that's why I buy this big can. So I just take it and I put a Ziploc bag in a cup to make it easy to fill so it'll like stand up, you know? And then I just fill multiple Ziploc bags. I do quart size bags and I get about five bags of nacho cheese in addition to the amount that I put on the stove which is probably equal to about what I put in these bags because I try to keep it pretty even and use like um, the amount that we would use for nachos. Um, so this is like six dinners out of this big can that I pay seven dollars for and at Kroger and Walmart and stuff you get the one can that's like one dinner for like between two and three dollars. So you're definitely getting a good deal by buying the big one from Sam's. So I leave them flat in my freezer to freeze and then once they are hardened I will stand them up because it's just easier to see what I have once they're standing up in the freezer. And here are our nachos that I made. In addition to heating up the nacho cheese, I made some ground beef with some taco seasoning and heated up a can of refried beans. So Elijah has that with a little bit of lettuce on top and Lily has that with a little bit of salsa on top. And then I've got some Taco Bell sauce, some pico sour cream, um, and I think that's it. This next recipe is called slow cooker steak and potato soup and this was a brand new recipe that I was trying. So in my crock pot I started off with some stew meat down in the bottom and I did cut this up a little bit smaller than stew meat typically comes. I cut it into smaller pieces so it was more like a bite size and it was about probably a pound and a half of meat and then I added in some carrots, some diced onion, some yellow potato. You want to make sure it's yellow potato because it said that they would hold together better in the soup versus like a russet potato and then I added in some salt and some chili powder some cumin and a little bit of cayenne pepper if you don't want any spice you could leave the cayenne pepper out but I just did a little bit and it was definitely not too spicy at all and then I added in four cups of beef broth I just made my own beef broth with some hot water and some of the um what's it called tones like beef bouillon base and you can see I didn't uh, mix it together very well because a little bit of it was still like not mixed into the water but it was fine and then I added in a whole 10 ounce bottle of steak sauce the recipe said one cup which is eight ounces but my bottle was 10 ounces so I was like I don't want to just have two ounces left in this bottle there's like nothing there so I just went ahead and added in the whole bottle and then I stir that together really well and put the lid on and let this cook on low for like eight hours so to go with the soup I knew I wanted some bread and I saw my friend Ashley make this bread a couple weeks back so I will have her video linked down below as well as the actual link to the recipe. It's a peasant bread and it looked delicious like super like crispy on the outside but soft on the inside so I knew I wanted to try it. I am using active dry yeast instead of instant yeast so in a large bowl I am adding my water and then my yeast and sugar and then I'm gonna let that sit for 10 minutes for the yeast to get foamy and then once it's foamy I added in my flour and my salt and then just stir to combine until you have like a sticky dough ball if I hadn't seen my friend Ashley make this already I would have been like concerned with how sticky this dough is because it is 
extremely sticky, but it's fine. It turns out really good. Um, so then once you've got your like dough ball formed, then you just cover it with a tea towel or some kind of kitchen towel and put it in a warm spot and let it double in size for about two hours. I covered mine and stuck it in the oven with the light on um, just so it could have a warm spot because it was actually kind of chilly in my house this day. Once my dough had doubled in size, I deflated the dough with two forks and started to kind of pull it away from the edges of the bowl. And then I drizzled it with some olive oil. And then I used my forks to kind of turn the dough ball over and get it all nice and coated with that oil and kind of form it into more of a ball. And then I got my baking pan out. I'm using a loaf pan and I am greasing it with some salted butter. I think I use about half a stick of butter to just grease that pan really, really well. And then I just dropped my dough ball down into that and I let it rise again for about 45 minutes to an hour. And here's what you kind of want it to look like before you bake it. You want it rising up over the edge of the pan. And then I baked this in an oven at 375 for about 45 minutes. And then here is what that looked like. I let it cool for a few minutes in the pan and then took it out and let it continue to cool on the countertop for a little bit before slicing. And here is what it looked like sliced. The outside was super crispy and the inside was super duper soft. It was really a really great like sandwich bread. I know that this would make great sandwiches. We didn't have um, any leftover to eat with sandwiches. We ate the leftovers with the leftover soup. And here is what that soup looked like after the eight hours of cooking. It looks great. Um, all my potatoes were soft, but still held together really well. My carrots were soft, um, just, just soft enough, not like mushy. And at this point, I also tasted it to see if I needed to add any seasoning. And honestly, it didn't need anything. It was perfect. This was delicious. My whole family loved it. It was probably one of our favorite meals of the week. It is Monday night and tonight for dinner we are having meatball subs. So I've got some frozen meatballs here on my air fryer basket. These are the Italian style beef meatballs from Sam's Club. And I just put some of them on here and I'm going to throw this in the air fryer for probably about 15 minutes on 350. I can't remember what temperature I did them at last time. But it says in the oven you do 400 for like 22 to 25 minutes. And usually I like to turn down the heat on my air fryer just a little bit. So I'm going to do 350 and do 15 minutes and see how they're looking after that. Okay, it has been 15 minutes. And as you can see, my meatballs are done. Um, now in this pot, I've just got some marinara sauce. This is our favorite one from Aldi. I'm heating that up. And I'm just going to put my meatballs in here and let the sauce heat up. And then once the sauce is heated up... I will assemble our meatball subs and then I'm gonna put the meatball subs in the air fryer to like melt the cheese. But just gonna go ahead and get these in the sauce and let that simmer just for a few minutes till it's all nice and hot. Okay, I've got my sub bread here. I went ahead and stuck this in the air fryer for just a couple minutes to toast it. I'm just gonna put some meatballs and some sauce on it. And then I have some sliced mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna put that on there and then stick these back in the air fryer for like, I don't know, a minute or two just for that cheese to get melted. Okay, here is the finished dinner. The kids are splitting a sandwich. 
Um, and then I'm having half of one. I don't think I'll be able to eat two. Um, I mean, like the whole sandwich, but we'll see. We've also got salad for me and Elijah. And then Lily just has some tomatoes and cucumbers. But we love meatball subs. Super easy to put together and always a favorite. For this next recipe, I'm starting off with my oven preheated to 425 and then in a 9 by 13 inch pan, I am adding half a cup of chicken broth and two tablespoons of butter and then I'm sticking that in the oven to just let it cook for about 10 minutes. If you've been here a while and you've seen my other what's for dinner, you may remember a couple weeks back, I made something very similar to this recipe. This might look very familiar and that is because I am taking the magic crispy baked shrimp recipe but doing that with tilapia. So I'm adapting it just a little bit to make sure that I have enough flavor for all of my pieces of tilapia. So after I had that in the oven I started working on juicing two lemons. The original recipe only calls for the juice of one lemon but I am doing two for my tilapia and then I minced up a bunch of garlic. Recipe calls for three garlic cloves. I did like seven I think. I like a lot of garlic. Now in a bowl big enough to put my tilapia in, I started mixing together the stuff we're gonna like coat it with. So that's gonna be that lemon juice, those garlic cloves, some salt and pepper, and then some melted butter. And I did three tablespoons of melted butter. And then I just mixed that all together really well. And then I got my tilapia in there and just kind of like made sure each piece of tilapia was coated really well. I used four pieces of tilapia for this. And then I just set that to the side and let it sit in that lemon and butter mixture until I was ready to put it in the oven. Then it was time to make the crispy topping. So in another container, I melted two more tablespoons of butter. And then to that, I added about three quarters of a cup of panko breadcrumbs and about a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. And then I just mixed that all together really well. After being in the oven for 10 minutes, I pulled that casserole dish out and I had this nice hot chicken broth and melted butter. And then I added in my tilapia. I made sure I got all of like that garlic and butter out of that bowl and just like scooped it out on top of the tilapia. And then I sprinkled on that panko mixture that I made. And then this went back in the oven on 425 for about 12 minutes. After it was done cooking for the 12 minutes, my tilapia was cooked through, but then I broiled it for about two minutes just to get it nice and crispy on the top. This was absolutely delicious, just as good as that shrimp recipe was. I would definitely make this again. It, it's just really good and it really does turn out like super crispy and just really buttery and lemony, which I love on like shrimp and fish. So I knew that this would be good on this. To go with it, I just made my garlic Parmesan pasta, super simple. I will leave a video down below where I made that and then some green beans as well. Wednesday, I made a new recipe called Instant Pot Cockadoodle Noodles. This is from a YouTube channel called Pressure Luck or Jeffrey Eisner. All of his recipes that I've tried are really good, but most of them are like 
super rich um, which you'll see in this video it has a lot to it and it's super rich and filling so I'm starting off my instant pot on the saute function and I'm just melting up four tablespoons of butter to cook my chicken in I have gone and diced up my chicken pretty small like small bite-sized pieces and I'm gonna get that in there to cook but I am going to season it he doesn't have you do this he has you add seasoning later but I wanted to cook some of the seasoning into the chicken so I went in with some garlic powder some onion powder some black pepper some salt and some Italian seasoning and I just let that cook for a couple of minutes till my chicken was like most of the way cooked through it doesn't have to be all the way cooked through because we are going to be pressure cooking this Once my chicken was where I wanted it to be, I went in with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. It said that this was to deglaze the pan, but I didn't really have anything to deglaze. I think that's mostly because I left out the mushrooms. So I just kind of stirred it around for a few minutes, made sure that there wasn't anything on the bottom, but there really wasn't. So then I went in with my chicken broth. I did three and a half cups of chicken broth. I always make mine with some Knorr chicken bouillon and some water so I got that in there and then I added in some more seasoning which was some more garlic powder some more onion powder some more black pepper and a little bit of salt and some more Italian seasoning I gave that a good stir made sure everything was combined really well and then I poured on one 12 ounce bag of egg noodles we're not going to be stirring anymore we just want that sitting on top of the chicken but kind of pressed down into the liquid and then I also added in some frozen mixed veggies it, he said to do 20 ounces but I just did I think this was either a 12 or 16 ounce bag so I just poured that in on top of the noodles and then I got my lid on here made sure my valve was in the sealing position and, and then I cooked this on manual high pressure for two minutes and then I only let this do a natural release for five he said you could go up to 10 but he also said in the tips like if you don't want your egg noodles like super duper soft just go for five minutes so I like my egg noodles a little bit firmer so I did the five minute natural release and then release the rest of the rest of the pressure after releasing the rest of the pressure, I took off the lid and started adding in the rest of my ingredients. This is where this dish becomes super rich. So I added in one cup of heavy cream and two cups of like shredded cheese. I did cheddar, about half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, one package of Borson cheese. I did like the garlic and herb kind. Um, he said to cut it into chunks. I probably should have done that. I just left it as a whole big brick, but it probably would have melted a little bit better or faster had I cut it into chunks because it took a little bit for me to get it to melt. And, and then I also added in about two tablespoons of some buffalo wing sauce to give it a little bit of a kick, which is completely optional. And then I also added in a little bit of salt till I got it to taste where I wanted it to. I did a little bit of seasoned salt for that. The other thing that he had you add in the recipe was some ranch dressing, like one fourth of a cup of ranch dressing, but I left that out. Um, I didn't really want a ranch flavor in this, so that's why I left it out. Um, I didn't think my family would care for it very much, and I just wasn't um, really digging the idea of ranch in it. So I left it out, but even without it, it was still like so rich, and it was actually really delicious. My family loved it. I would definitely recommend it and I would definitely make it again. 
Thursday night, I tried a new side dish recipe called twice baked potato casserole. So I'm just starting off by baking my potatoes in the air fryer the way I always do. You could bake them in the oven if that's the way you prefer to do it, but I prefer to do it in the air fryer. So I just took my potatoes, washed them, dried them, coated them with some olive oil, and then sprinkled them with some salt. And then I put them in the air fryer on about like 375 for about 40 minutes, flipping them over halfway through. This recipe is a recipe that I found on TikTok. There weren't like exact measurements and so I can't give you exact measurements. I was just trying to make enough for my family to have dinner this night. So that's why I only cooked two really big potatoes, but it still was a lot of twice baked potato casserole. There was enough for leftovers the next day for lunch. So once these were done cooking in the air fryer, I let them rest for a few minutes so they weren't too hot to handle. And then I just took the potatoes and kind of diced them up into a bite-sized pieces. Then I put half of those potatoes in the bottom of a baking dish and I seasoned them with some garlic powder, some onion powder, a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I topped them with some sour cream, just spread it out over the top of them as best as I could, added on some cheddar cheese and some bacon bits, and then I repeated those layers. And then I melted about half a stick of butter and then poured this over the top of the whole thing. And then I baked this at 350 for about 25 minutes just to get everything nice and hot. You know, the potatoes already cooked, so you don't have to worry about that. You just want your sour cream to get hot and your cheese to all melt. And then once it came out of the oven, I sprinkled it with some dried chives. And this was delicious. Would recommend um, the kids and I loved it. Andy's not a fan of sour cream very much, so he thought it was a little, a little weird. Too much sour cream for him, probably, but overall, we all liked it. To go with that, we had some pork chops. Y'all always get a kick out of the things that Andy writes on the bags when he helps me separate the meat. So on these pork chops, they were thick cut, so he wrote, thick boy porky choppies. So I thought y'all would think that was funny. I just took those and dried them off and then made this Aldi brand like barbecue shake and bake. I've done this before. I just cook it in the air fryer for about 20 minutes, flipping halfway through. I think I did it on like 350 or 375. And here is the finished dinner. We had our pork chops with a load of baked potato casserole and then a salad on the side for those of us who like salad and just some fresh veggies on the side for Lily. If you have an Aldi near you and you haven't tried this barbecue shake and bake, highly recommend it. I've only tried it on pork, but I'm sure it's good on chicken as well. It's got a really good barbecue flavor. We really enjoy it. This is the second time I've bought it and I will definitely buy it again because it is really good. But that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you plan on trying any of these recipes, let me know in the comments down below. And if you ever do make any of the recipes, come back, let me know how you liked it, or share a photo with me on Instagram. I love hearing how y'all like the recipes that you tried that I shared with you. So I hope that you guys have a good rest of the weekend and a great week, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!